Lynn will be leading questions, and then we'll be moving to audience questions. So thank you, Lynn. All right, thank you, Mark. Is this working? Yeah. Um, Mark's asked me to just give a few pointers on some of the science of aging that perhaps um, wasn't covered in the debate that um, you may be interested in. And the thing is, I'm, I'm a very down-to-earth scientist. I don't hold, perhaps, the rather distant opinions of, of our two debaters here. I'm somewhere in the middle between them. So I wanted to just put the middle ground to you. And then at the end of the debate, what we'll do is find out what your opinions are on what research strategy might be the best in terms of tackling aging. OK, so um, as Mark says, I work on aging. I am a basic biogerontologist, but I was also, I served on the executive committee for the British Society for Research on Aging for seven years. And as part of that, I became very aware of the sorts of translational research that was going on in the field. And I just want to take you through a few of those points. Right, now, these guys have talked about aging as a process, and they've talked about some of the therapies like rapamycin that can actually tackle aging. What they haven't talked about is the bits that make aging utterly miserable. The compression and morbidity that has been mentioned is important because women spend, on average, the last 11 years of their lives sick and ill. Men about nine years because they just don't last as long. Right, so, <laughs> you're lucky. Right, um, so things that we don't talk about, the really, really gory stuff that no one talks about, ulcers. Right, you don't think ulcers are bad until you've seen an old person with a non-healing ulcer. They are absolutely you do want gross the other and dis. You do want the other one. Oh, yeah, it's not working. Well, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, right, you get a hole in your leg. It doesn't heal. It gets it, deeper and it's deeper. It's working. Thanks. Oop. No, <laughs> I don't want that slide. <laughs> And, and they are disgusting. And the current treatment for an ulcer is to scrape it off every so often and put maggots on to eat away the dead material, right? That is current 21st century medicine until the research into the basic biology of aging showed us that estrogen mimics can promote aging of ulcers. So this is current, this is in clinical trials. Dr. Matt Hardman at the University of Manchester is conducting trials on this with very, very promising results. There is aging research out there that can give benefits now. Another of the things about aging, okay, no one talks about it, incontinence. Half of all women in their 80s are incontinent, a quarter of all men. It is the biggest cause of institutionalization of old people. It's also one of the biggest causes of social isolation and depression. You do not want to become incontinent. Half of the women in this audience will be, a quarter of you blokes will be. You don't want it to happen to you. And there's a guy, um, James Maloney in London, who has discovered that incontinence in elderly women is caused by intracellular bacteria. There is a therapy out there now, he has used it in his clinic, and he has cured old age incontinence in a whole pile of people using long-term chronic use of antibiotics. Um, Janet Lord, Professor Janet Lord in Birmingham is working on immune senescence where your, your immune system essentially runs out of steam. Old people get flu about the same instance as young people. Old people die of flu, massively higher incidence than young people. Old people fall over, fracture their hip. They don't die of the hip fracture, they die of pneumonia about six months later. Their immune systems are so depressed, they can't cope with any additional stresses. And what Janet has shown is a small molecule that modulates the immune system, DHEAs, are very beneficial in promoting recovery of the immune system in older people. And this also, I think um, Janet's in some clinical trials at the moment. Cancer is one of the big killers of old age. If there's an exponential increase in cancer as people get older, there are drugs around used to treat other things. Metformin is used to treat diabetes. Diabetes type 2 is a major uh, disease of old age. And accidentally, it's been shown that metformin treatment for diabetes has major impact in preventing cancer. Um, cardiovascular disease. There's an enormous people, number of people walking around today who would have died of heart attacks had they not been taking statins. This is therapy here and now that's affecting the lives of older people. Now, caloric restriction was mentioned as this two-year life increase. Um, what's actually happening, if you can see the graph there, there's an enormous number of centenarians in the Okinawan Japanese population. They are aging successfully. It's not just that they've got that extra two years of life. They've got more health. Their health span is greater. Um, now, there are some very, very exciting advances coming through. Um, this is a project by David Smith in Oxford. He's kindly lent me his slides. Um, vitamin B 
enough vitamin B in sort of Marmite on toast every morning will stave off Alzheimer's. Again, a therapy that's practical, usable here and now that can help prevent the onset of age-related diseases. Oh, sorry, that's, that's the Optima project. So vitamin B actually works by blocking the action of homocysteine on the brain. Right, and then what I think is one of the most important and exciting advances is by looking at premature aging diseases. Now, these are children with what's called Hutchinson-Guilford progeria. It's actually a laminopathy where their nuclear membranes are all wiggly and folded up. Essentially, the lamin protein that should be inside um, on the inner surface of the membrane is actually still attached into the lipid of the membrane and it makes it function incorrectly. So what they've done in the, Hutchison, sorry, in the Progeria Foundation is looked for drugs that can alter this and restore a normal nuclear envelope and you get a good restoration in cell culture of function. What this has done is gone into clinical trials in children with Progeria and shown very beneficial outcomes. And it's not just kids with Progeria. This is very emotive, but there are 200 of these children worldwide but there's an enormous number of aged adults with cardiovascular disease, the main killer of progeria children, and it seems that the, uh, the therapies that were developed in clinical trials of progeria are also going to be positive in treating cardiovascular disease in older people. So there's some very good parallels coming through from basic biogerontology research that is having practical applications in the clinic right now. Um, so this is just the, the report from the Progeria Foundation. They've done a triple trial now with um, phenyl transferase inhibitors, statins and bisphosphonates, and found improvement in every single child in the trial. So very, very positive results. Now, that was all I was going to say in terms of where we're at. And what I'd like to do now is um, kick off the questions from the audience.